Hello, everyone. Welcome to our workshop. Before we start the workshop, let me introduce myself. I'm Gilberto Biondo. I have about 14 years experience with mainframe with different local and international customers working with projects uh, including consolidation and modernization for mainframes. I also have some publications around mainframe technology. In our workshop today, we're going to talk about the automated mainframe CI-CD pipelines with AWS developer tools and microfocus. So what should we expect from our workshop today? First, we're going to talk about why to modernize a mainframe development cycle. Then we're going to briefly overview the services that will be used in this workshop. After that, we're going for a demo where we'll see all the services working together in order to deliver an automated CI-CD pipeline for a mainframe application. Then we'll move over to the key takeaways and wrap up with a Q&A session. So first, uh, why to modernize a mainframe development lifecycle? Well, the answer for this question may vary from one customer to another, depending on their business strategy and where they are in the development life cycle. But their answers are usually surrounding three different areas that we're going to cover here. So the first area is the slow mainframe development life cycle. And we've seen customers have an increased need and increased pace for from business to their applications, especially for mainframe applications, but their process and their tools have not been able to keep up with this increased pace, generating some backlogs. Also, they may have some complex and manual process to provision the environment test systems that may slow even further the development cycle. The second reason is the limited and expensive compute resources. We all know that mainframes can be expensive. Also, they are limited by the physical capacity available on site. Some, in some situations, the customer also shares this hardware between production, development, and test systems. When they do so, the resources can be even more scarce and in situations where there is a high demand for CPU for production, like the end of the year, end of the quarter, or other situations, the test and development system may receive even less CPU capacity that slows down the processing and the development cycle for your application. Finally, we have the outdated development practices and tools. Mainframe development practices and culture cannot support the modern approach due to monolithic practices. Well, that can come from a variety of forms. That can be the works, uh, the teams working in silos, uh, lack of automation and integration, lack of team environment, team and environment uh, collaboration, and other reasons. Also, the archaic interfaces may limit the developer productivity. Even simple tasks such as autocomplete while uh, coding or doing some smart editing may not be available from a mainframe development team. So now that we know the three main reasons why customers want to modernize their uh, mainframe development cycle, uh, what are the benefits or what can we achieve from uh, performing this modernization. Uh, we can also talk about three different uh, benefits here. The first one is an increase in application development agility, so they can develop their applications faster, and that can be achieved by simple tasks, even as having a modern IDE that allows the developer to use autocomplete or smart debugging or instant code co compilation Second, we have an increase in pipeline infrastructure agility that can be achieved by providing a flexible environment that can accommodate changes in the demand for testing and development automatically and dynamically. And finally, we can increase the pipeline process agility. That can be done 
through the integration of the tools being used and the automation of the process. Now that we've seen the benefits we can have from uh, mainframe development life cycle modernization, let's see the tools that we're going to use in our demo. Here we have some different services that are spread across, um, across some categories, including AWS services and vendor services. First, we have the AWS developer tools. This category will be used to share the source code, do the code build, test, and deploy the applications. The first service we have here is the AWS code commit. This is a highly scalable managed source control that can be used to store your source code data into private Git repositories. Then we have the AWS code build that's a fully managed control continuous integration tool that can be used for building your package, compiling your code, run tests, and prepare it for deployment. Then we have the AWS Code Deploy. The AWS Code Deploy is a fully managed deployment service that automates the software deployment to a variety of instances, including Amazon, EC2, AWS Fargate, AWS Lambda, and even your on-premise service. Finally, we have AWS Code Pipeline. This is a fully managed continuous delivery service. It can help you to auto automate your release pipeline for a fast and reliable application and infrastructure release. Following to the next category, we have the compute services. Here, we have the Amazon Less Cloud Compute, Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2, that provides a flexible uh, compute capacity for our programs and for our systems to run. Then we have the AWS Lambda that allows us to run our code without even uh, worrying or considering the server instance. It allows us to run our codes, our scripts, and only pay for the time we consume that resources. Third, we have the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, Amazon ECR, that provides a simple way to store, manage, and deploy container images that will be used for the, do, uh, the building and the testing. Moving over to the storage category, we use the Amazon Simple Storage Service, Amazon S3, that's a object storage service highly available, scalable, with a high security and performance. And then we have the additional tools that can be used here to provide an end-to-end -end solution in our environment. Here we have the developer ID that will allow us to write new code and push this code to uh, the Git repository available in AWS code commit, all the way to the Microfox changement ZMF that will allow us to push the code to the mainframe environment. Now that we've seen all the services that are going to be used in this demo, let's take a look at the architecture. Here we have the architecture that's going to be used for this workshop. And as I mentioned, it's going all the way from the developer IDE to a deploy to a mainframe environment. Uh, our path here starts when the developer IDE push, writes new code and push that to the AWS code commit. Okay, so whenever they do that, it will be uploaded to the private Git repository, and that will trigger an AWS CloudWatch event that will then call AWS pipeline, code pipeline. Uh, remember that the code pipeline is the one that's responsible for uh, orchestrating all the services and all the steps in your CI CD pipeline. It's going to first call the AWS code build. This portion will be responsible for building the code that we have just uploaded. Code uh, AWS code build will run a container with the MicroFocus build tools. This container is currently stored 
into Amazon ECR and will be pulled and provisioned. After this machine is provisioned, it's going to download the source code out of the AWS code commit and perform the build steps. Those build steps will include compiling and linking the code. After the code has been compiled, linked, and packaged, it's going to be stored into an S3 bucket, along with other artifacts. Once this process is completed, code pipeline will be notified and will start the next phase. Next phase here is a call to the AWS code deploy that will be responsible for deploying the code for testing. The code deploy here will communicate with a MicroFocus Enterprise test server on Amazon EC2 using a code deploy agent. This code deploy agent will download the artifacts that were stored in the Amazon S3 and will leverage all the source code to the correct places for testing. When this is complete, it will go back to the code pipeline, which will trigger the next phase, which in our case is the test phase. For the test phase, we're going to use an AWS Lambda that will communicate with the enterprise test server to make sure all the tests run. If all the tests run successfully, it will again notify the code pipeline, AWS code pipeline, that will then trigger the last phase in a project that's releasing to the production servers. Here, we call again another AWS Lambda function that will deliver the code to the target environment. Okay, so this is the architecture that we're going to use in this workshop all the way from the developers coding to deploying to a production environment. Now it's time for starting the demo. Let's take a look how that works in the AWS environment. Okay, so we're now at the AWS Management Console and we're going to take a look at the services we're going to use for this demo. And we will also uh, create us some of the services that will be required. For ease of access, I have done some prior work here. So the AMI roles, the Lambda role, uh, Lambda functions and the AMIs have, have already been created, okay? And we are going to work with the code pipeline, code commit, code build, code deploy, and calling uh, the Lambda functions, okay? Uh, before uh, we move on and start creating the new stuff, let's uh, just take a look. First, let's go to the EC2 here. Okay, here we have uh, one image that's already running. It's our test server. And we're going to launch a new instance here that will be used as our developer image. Okay, so I'm going to launch image. I have one AMI ready developer image for workshop. I'm going to select this one. Okay, for filter by, I'm going to use a Z1D instance here, 2x large. Okay, instance details, uh, nothing re really special here. Okay, just be careful because since we're going to use this image as our developer image, I want to be able to RDP into it. So I'm going to auto assign a public IP here, okay? Not going to change anything else, just leaving that as default. For the storage, we have 60 gig of, of storage that should be more than enough for, for this demo. You may want to adjust that to your needs. We're not setting up any tags either. And for security group, I have already created one here that has all the ports that we need. So we have secure, uh, workshop security group and let's review and launch. Everything should be okay here. Let's launch. And I'm not selecting a key pair because I have that already set up as well. 
So launching instance. Okay, let's view the instances. Okay, so while this one is booting up, let, let me put here developer ID. Okay, so oops. So this one is going to be uh, the image we will use to write the new code and push the data over to the our AWS code pipeline. Okay, let's take a look here at the Amazon ECR, let's container registry. Okay, uh, we do see a repository here ready and within that repository, we already have our instance here. Okay, this is the instance we're going to work with. It's close to 800 megabytes and we're going to uh, load this instance when we're uh, doing our test and build. Okay. Also, let's take a look at the Lambda functions and see that we do have the two functions we're going to use in this demo. Okay. Uh, we have six here, but the ones we want to take a look at is code pipeline run tests. Okay, this is the function we're going to run our tests with. And this is the one that we're going to uh, deploy the co code to production. Okay, so we have already uh, the EC2, we have the Lambda functions here, we check the ECR. Let's take a look at the S3 bucket as well. We have one bucket already set up here. We have this one, MF AWS CICDR artifacts workshop. Okay, we're going to use this bucket to store the artifacts we're going to use. Okay, so uh, let's start here. Let's move over to uh, AWS code commit. Okay, uh, I just click it here. Uh, we see the repositories and we are going to create a new repository. Okay, there is one already here, but I want to create a new one for this demo. And for the repository name, let's keep that very simple. So it will be workshop repo. Okay, a description here. This is the um, repository for uh, CICD demo. Okay. Not going to add any tags and create. Okay, so we have already created the uh, our repository called workshop heap repo. Uh, we have the instructions here to clone this repository. Uh, we don't have we don't have to write those down because we're going to use uh, some tool to to clone the repository. Okay, the only thing we want to do here is add a file, create a file. That will be a dummy file, just so we have a main branch here. Okay, so I'm creating a dummy file. Oops, awkward. And putting, putting my name and email here, a commit message dummy file to create a branch and commit change. Okay, so uh, we already have one file here, clicking back to repository and back to our workshop dash repo, we're going to see our new file here. Okay, very easy, very simple. So everything we had to do with the code commits already completed. Let's move now next to code build. You can jump from the um, left hand side menu here, build, and click on build project. 
Okay, here we also see the projects that we have for this account. Uh, we're going to create a new build project as well. We're not going to use the one we currently have. Okay, so for project name, keep it simple as well, workshop dash build, okay, because this is the build portion. Build workshop environment, okay, and uh, not building badge, not uh, enabling for, to concurrent build, okay. The source, okay, so where is the source data that we will use? It's going to be AWS code commit. That's why we created it first, okay? So uh, it's already selected here. Repository, we're going to select the repository we want. It's going to be workshop-repo. And we're going to reference that by branch, okay? So uh, we leave branch here and select main branch, okay? That means that uh, whenever there is a, a, a change and we're going to look for the main branch into this repository, okay? We're not doing any additional configuration, okay? Leaving that as is. For the environment, uh, what is the environment that's going to uh, build this project, we're going to use a custom image here. So it's we're going to specify a Docker image, custom. Environment type, uh, let's select here. We're working with a Linux, okay? So that container image we're seeing is a Linux instance. So select in, uh, Linux here, okay? We're going to pull that image from the Amazon ECR. Okay, it's already selected. And from my ECR account, we're not pulling that from anywhere else. If you're doing it, if you have multiple accounts, you may want to uh, do that from another account. You can just select here, okay? Uh, from the, which repository? We just have one, right? So we select here, MF. AWS CSCD container repository, and that's going to be the latest image we have, okay? Okay, we're going to, uh, let me just see. Yeah, we're going to use code build uh, credentials here. And for the service role, we're going to use an existing service role, okay? Because as I said, I have already created all the IAM um, roles that we're going to need. So let's take a look here. We already have one. Okay, select it. No additional configuration as well. For the build spec, uh, where the build spec file will be located in our, uh, in our environment. Okay, this is going to be in bank demo. Um, forward slash AWS dash CICD forward slash uh, build spec dot YAML. Okay, so this is where our uh, build specs is going to reside. Okay, if you if it's somewhere else, if it's uh, the base uh, of your environment, you don't have to put everything here, just put uh, the name of your YAML file. Okay, uh, for the artifacts, okay, what uh, we're going to create artifacts in the Amazon S3. So we select Amazon S3 here. For the bucket name, we're going to use the MF AWS here. Okay, remember that for uh, your environment, it's going to be a different run one, right? We have uh, to create a unique S3 bucket to, to use. And we're just enabling uh, cement versioning here. Okay. Uh, no change here, no change here, uh, no packaging. Okay, so we leave that as none. No additional configuration. And for logs, we do, uh, we do leave the CloudWatch logs here as well. Okay, so 
Now we're going to create the build project. Uh, when we do that, it will start uh, a new build. We're going to stop it. Uh, okay, so yeah, no, it's good. Uh, so we have the build ready here. Okay, so let's take a look, just make sure. Okay, it's, it's not running, build project. We do have the workshop build here, okay? Uh, let's move now next to the code deploy, okay? For the code deploy, we have to first uh, create an application, okay? So we're going to click here in application and create application. For name, keeping very simple, so workshop dash application and compute platform. Let's take a look. Uh, we are going to use EC2 dash on-premise. Okay, so if you wanted to uh, deploy that to your on-premise, you could do as well, Or, but we're doing EC2 in this case. Okay, now create application. Okay, now we have our application. After that, we have to create a deployment group as well. Okay, so now we're going to click here on create deployment group. Okay, you can see that it's related to our application here and compute type EC2 dash on premise. Let's give it a name, workshop again, dash deployment group. Okay. It's going to use a service role, right, to perform the deployment. I have already created as well. We're going to use code deploy to EC2. Okay. Development type will be uh, in place. We just have one uh, test server that will be used. We're not going to use uh, a, big, a blue green uh, deployment in this case. For several, uh, for environment configuration, we're going to use Amazon EC2 instance. So we select Amazon EC2 instance, and we're going to use tags to uh, to determine which instance will be running the deploy. Okay, I have that test server. It already has a tag. Okay, it's called uh, Code Deploy Group. So we select here, code deploy group. We select a value, value ETS EC2 instance. Okay, so we see uh, this one. And we can note here that we have one unique match instance. Click here for details. Let's just click here to make sure that will point us to our test server. So as you can see, name is test server. So we are uh, applying the correct tags, okay? So uh, just to make sure, just wanted to make sure that we're uh, filtering the correct servers here, okay? Uh, you can also see here that you have one uh, matched instance, okay? For the agent configuration, okay, as AWS system manager, we're going to, uh, install now and schedule the update, okay? It's already installed, it's already running, but let's leave it as is. Uh, remember that's very important to have the system manager SSM running up and running into your instance in order to be able to perform the deploy, okay? And you have the code deploy agent as well. We're going to use both here, okay? The, the, System Manager is also going to be used in the Lambda to, to communicate. For the deployment settings, okay, we're doing all at once. We just have one instance anyway, so we're just doing all at, at once here. And for load balancer, uh, we're not using it. Okay, we're not doing any load balancing. Now let's create deployment group. Okay, we already have the application and we have the deployment group. Now let's create a deployment here. Okay, 
for the deployment group, it's already set up, right? It's the one we just created. My application stored in an S3. Uh, let me just put here uh, S3 uh, double slash and F AWS PICD artifacts workshop forward slash workshop pipeline uh, forward slash fact forward slash deploy dot zip okay. and the revision type is a zip it's going to be a zip file and a deployment description this deployment um, deploys code to test server for testing purposes. Okay, just uh, for the additional details here, uh, additional behavior, we're going to set two things here. Okay, first, uh, don't fail the deployment to an instance if it fails. Okay, so we uh, keep this one. Okay, we select this one. And if there is uh, already the files with the same name, uh, we're going to override the contact. Okay, so we override and don't fail the deployment here. Okay, let's create the deployment. And now it's going to start a deployment. Let me stop here because I, I don't want to do uh, any deployment. Okay, stop it. Okay, we see that it has stopped. And Okay, so we already have the code commit setup, code build setup, code deploy setup. Now let's do a code pipeline. Okay, so code pipeline, let's click in pipelines and create one pipeline as well. For the pipeline name, keep it simple, workshop-pipeline. Okay, it's going to use an existing service role as well. We're going to use the one we already have. No advanced settings. Keep it simple. Let's move to next. Okay, so the first phase is the search phase. Okay, you, you see that you have to use a search phase. In our case, it's going to be AWS code commit. And we do the same settings, right? Repository name workshop repo branch name it's going to be the main we're going to use the cloud watch events okay which is the recommendation here to uh, check for change okay and use code pipeline defaults here for the output format moving next we have the build which is optional, okay? Uh, just keep in mind that when you do a pipeline, you have the source and you have to have at least one more phase. It has to be at least two phases. So either build or uh, deploy will uh, be a must, but not both. So in this case, optional, but we're going to use AWS code, code build here, region, uh, US East North Virginia, it's the one we're, we've been using in this demo. Project name, workshop dash build. Okay, we're going to use a single build here and click next. Now we also have the deploy, you see, optional as well. Deploy provider, it's going to be AWS code deploy region. US East, application name, very easy, workshop application and deployment group, workshop deployment group, okay? Next, now we review, everything should be ready, workshop pipeline for our name, artifact, uh, artifact location, I ended up uh, using another one here, it's not a problem, it's already set up as well, okay? But uh, just keep in mind that you may want to update this one. 
first action, we're going to use code commit here. For the build portion, we're going to use code build. And here for the deploy, we're going to use code deploy. I'm going to create this pipeline and I will stop it because I, I don't want it to run right away. Okay, so stop execution because we haven't put any meaningful uh, information to run so far. We have source, we have build, and we have deploy. Uh, let's add two more phases here. Okay, so it's, it's already stopped. Uh, let's edit and move down here, add stage. We're going to add a new stage called test. Okay, so we're going to test what we have just uh, deployed. So add, and here we do an add action group. Okay, so this one is going to be test deployed um, code. And the action provider is going to be the Lambda, as we said. Okay, uh, North Virginia as well. Uh, it doesn't have to have an input artifact here. We're going to use the function run tests. And we do have some user parameters here I have already done. So place the user parameters that I required for your Lambda function to work properly. Okay, uh, no variable namespace, no output artifacts here. We're just running some tests. Done. This phase is complete, so now it's done as well. And let's add a fifth phase here. Okay, or our next phase here, which is the deploy to production. Okay, it's going to be called deploy to prod, add stage add action group as well, same name, keep it simple. Let's use Lambda function as well. So AWS Lambda, no input artifacts. We're going to use another uh, function name here, deploy to prod, and another set of user parameters, okay? Done as well, done here. Okay, so now we have included two more phases. Let's save our pipeline, save. And now we see that we have five stages. okay? Everything should be ready. Now we're going to move back here to EC2. Let me open a new tab so we don't lose track of the pipeline. And we're going we're going to use the developer id here so i'm picking up the ip and going to rdp that into our environment let's connect okay so now we're at the developer id too okay we're we're taking a look from the developer perspective. Uh, I do have the enterprise developer up, uh, open and running here, and I do have one COBOL file uh, already uh, up and running. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is connect our enterprise developer with the um, AWS code commit and <clears throat> So let's take a look how we, we're doing that. I have already set up the tools we're going to need. Okay, so we're going to need uh, a, uh, AWS Explorer, if I remember uh, the name. Uh, it's already installed here. Okay, uh, AWS Toolkit, I'm sorry. So uh, we go to Preferences and AWS Toolkit, it's, you see it's going to ask for your access key id and your secret access key okay so remember i have already created one a um iam user with access to uh, to my account so i'm going to copy and paste here my access key it's 
So, okay, and no worry, I'm, I'm going to uh, delete this access key and passwords as well, okay, after this demo. So uh, we apply here, uh, let's just apply and close. It's going to pop up a message here, just say yes. And let's get back uh, and do the configuration for AWS code commit as well. So we have AWS code commit. It's going to prompt for a user and password. Let's put our user and password here. So user. and password, apply as well. And last thing we want to do is go to region here and select the region we're working with, okay? So remember that we were working with US East North Virginia, okay? So I selected that, apply and apply and close, okay? Okay here, okay, so we have that configured. Now let's uh, show this. So we're going to show view and other and select here AWS, um, AWS Explorer. Uh, I was right. <laughs> so, okay, now we see AWS Explorer here. Uh, we have code commit, let's click on it. It's loading, it shows our workshop repo, right click and clone repository okay we're going to clone it just go next and finish okay it's already cloned uh let's just empty that folder before we can connect our our project here okay so let me just go over there and Okay, so not, now what we're going to do is associate our project with that uh, repository so we can be uh, committed and push it. Okay, so here at Bank Demo, we're going to right click, we're going to team and share project. Okay, so when we click there, it's going to, uh, open up the configured Git repository. We're going to click here and select workshop repo, which is the one we've just cloned, okay? Finish here. Okay, good. So uh, we see that now the bank demo has the uh, name of the repository here and the branch with the main, okay, very good. And let's open here again the COBOL file. So uh, before we submit our code, uh, push our code to AWS code commit, there's a couple of things I would like to show you here that I find very neat regarding uh, having a modern developer ID we can use, okay? So the first thing I would like to show here is that uh, when you're working with variables, uh, you, you can just select the variable you want and you can see it highlighted everywhere throughout the code, okay? So if you want to know, okay, where, where am I using this uh, variable? You just select it and you see that it's uh, highlighted everywhere, okay? So that's very easy to find where this variable is being used. Also, uh, you know, you, you might may have a typo or something or forget the variable name. So if you put something or you delete something by mistake and this variable does not exist, it's going to highlight it for you. Okay, so it shows that uh, the red underscore here. And if you hold your mouse over, it's going to say the operand is not declared. Okay, so it's very easy. You don't have to try to build it. It's, it just pop up automatically for you so, so you can fix it. Okay, so I'm, I'm clicking here. And next thing you can also do is like a control space and it's going to 
uh, show you the options that you have. Since you, I, I just missed the G here, that was there was only one option, it, and it already auto completed. Okay, so it, it's very easy. It can save you lots of time while coding. Okay, and also it has uh, a build, so you see that every time you save, it's going to build. So you can check it and make sure that it's already working. So uh, I saved it. It's already uh, compiling my project here. And you see that it built, it, uh, it built with no errors. OK, so everything should be good. We should be ready to uh, send that or to commit that to our uh, AWS commit. So let's get back here and click right click again bank demo we're going to select team and now we're going to select commit okay uh we're going to see a new uh folder here uh git staging okay so here it's going to show all the unstaged chains uh, it's a large number of files because it's the first time we're doing remember that we've just created the repository so it's pretty much empty, right? So we click the double plus sign here to select everything and stage everything. And we're going to use, uh, use a commit message here. Um, this is, is the first commit of the project. Okay, not, not anything very useful, but just to show that in our uh, code pipeline okay so it's amazon.com and close it i'm the author and i'm also the committer okay here uh, you have two different options you can commit and you can uh, commit and push okay it, it, it's up to you for simplicity i'm going to go all the way i'm going commit and push here already and remember once we do that we're going to upload and we're going to push all the changes or all the staged files over to the aws commit code commit and that's going to trigger the cloud event uh, the cloud watch event the cloud watch events going to trigger uh aws code pipeline and that's going to handle all the uh, build, deploy, and test phases for us. Okay, so just keep in mind, I'm going to click here. And once we do that, we jump right back to the uh, AWS console to see what's happening. Okay, so click here. It's doing and it's done. Let's close here and get back to our console. Uh, let's move back to code pipeline. Okay, so here we're seeing the code pipeline and it's going to be refreshed and start building the all the phases. Okay, so let's refresh this one. We see that the search phase has already completed. You see accesses here. Okay, just now it automatically moved it over to the build phase. Okay. And while we're doing the build phase, you can come over here, click in the details, and you can see the details of the, your build phase. Okay, so uh, let's look here, phase details, and it's currently provisioning the, the instance. Remember, it's going through the Amazon ECR, pulling up the image and provisioning it for use. Okay. After it's done, it's going to download the source code and perform the build phases. Okay. Uh, also, you yeah, you see that it has already done this download and install phase build pre build and everything. So it's almost done already. You can go to build logs and see everything that's happening. So if you want to uh, take a look at what's happening to me during your build, you can come up here and see everything line by line and uh, troubleshoot if you have any problems or anything. Okay, you have also the details, environment variables and reports if you're doing anything. Okay, we're doing nothing 
are really uh, different here. So we can move back to pipeline. We see that it has already completed and it's on the uh, deploy phase. Same thing here. We also have the details. Let's click in details, see what's going on. Okay, so here uh, we see that it's already in the after install. So we have several different phases all the way from the application stop, download bundle, uh, before install, install, after install, application and validate. So there are several different steps that you can uh, run different scripts, run different commands uh, to your deploy phase. Okay, you can see Everything ran smoothly here, so we're good from this uh, code deployment as well. Let's move back here. It's going to uh, going to update shortly here that the build phase is complete. After this build phase is complete, we're going to perform these tests. Okay, so now we're going to the tests. And the very same thing here, okay, we can click here in the tails and watch for the logs, see what's happening. For the AWS Lambda functions, we're seeing from a CloudWatch management console perspective, okay, so we're going to see uh, a few log streams. Here we have the latest, we're going to click here, and you see all the things that happening, okay, so we see that here uh, we have a job success. So it has already completed all the tests, all, all the tests with success, and it's going to return here. Okay, so we see the test went fine as well. After the test is complete, we're going to the code uh, deploy to prod. Okay, you see that it has already completed the same thing here. You have the details, you can just click it and see the same way you did for the uh, test phase. Okay, so this is the last phase of our uh, pipeline here. You can see everything uh, completed green as well. And keep in mind that you can add different stuff. So if you want, you can add extra steps, maybe you can want to add a manual step or an approval, or you can integrate other uh, phases as well. Okay, that's very manageable when you can do that just by going back to your pipeline, edit, and adding or removing uh, stages here. Okay, so you can edit on stage, you can add on stage, you can add between source and build and deploy and everything okay so that's very manageable on what you can do with this uh move back here let's just see the pipeline and succeeded and you can see that you you can follow uh a code and also the commit message that was used so you can easily understand what's going on and what's the commit message that was using used during your face okay so uh now let's uh just stop our developer ide because we did everything we wanted okay so just stunt instance here and stop this instance we're not going to use anymore and that's that's the demo okay that's everything we wanted you could see all the way from a uh, developer writing code to uh, deploying the, the code to a production environment or to a simulated production environment. Okay, that can conclude the demo. Let's move back to our presentation. Okay, so now that our demo is complete, what are, what are the key takeaways from this session? Okay, so uh, I believe the main takeaway we have here is the wide range of possibilities that are created when we uh, modernize the mainframe applications to take advantage of the capabilities that are available through the AWS services and the MicroFocus tools to create an agile automated CI CD pipeline for the mainframe applications. Okay, so uh, 
based on everything we saw, we, we now can improve the time to market for your mainframe rela related projects. That can be done through the concurrent tests and improving parallelism. We can also enable an isolated environment for multiple concurrent tests. That's also allowed due to the elasticity of the services we're using. We're going to uh, reduce the test duration while still improving the software quality. That can be achieved because uh, we have now elastic resources that can grow and reduce or shrink as we need them. And so the teams are not constrained to a set of environment uh, resources to build their tests. And finally, we have the potential for a cost reduction related to test and development. This can be achieved by the emulation of the services with the microfocus we use here. So uh, what are the next steps? What we can do next? Okay. So after this workshop, we can uh, first experience these services to decide what works best for your needs. Okay. So maybe uh, you want to start very small and just use a modern IDE or just use AWS code commit to store your code and then grow from, from there. Or you want to go all the way through with one single application. Okay, each case depends on your needs. Then you can explore the additional AWS services that can improve your development environment. And some samples here, we can comment on using an AWS cloud formation to provide or to enable you to provide standard environments across different accounts that are easy to set up and destroy as required. You can create different AWS Lambda functions that will be of any purpose you need. Maybe you have two different applications that are highly tight and you want to test both applications at the same time. So when you perform a change to one application, you can also use a Lambda function that will also trigger uh, the test and the deployment for the second application and make sure that both applications are working well together. Finally, you can expand the solution to other applications as desired. So you can build and then scale to your environment as you need it and just uh, pay for the resources or just grow as you require and as you add new applications. So that's all I had for this workshop. Uh, thank you very much. Now have a session for Q&A. Thank you.